The triangle towers are impressive rock spires in the Baltoro Mastaks range of the mighty Karakuram in northern Pakistan. The towers offer some of the largest cliffs and most challenging rock climbing in the world. The towers create one of the wonders of the earth, capturing the imagination of everyone who travels on the Baltoro Glacier. The highest point in the group is the summit of Great Triangle Tower at 6,286 meters. The east base of which features the world's greatest nearly vertical drop. It resembles a giant castle planked by steep walls. On top of nearly a mile sheer rock, four magnificent summit turrets comprise the east, west, main, and south summits. All exceed 6,200 meters. It is a complex combination of steep ice gullies steeper rock paces and vertical to overhanging head walls, topped by a snowy ridge system. The sibling Trango Tower, 6,239 meters, stands as a proud rook, the ultimate rock spire. This is a very large, pointed, rather symmetrical spire which juts 1,000 meters out of the ridge line. Trango Towers offer some of the most impressive and difficult big wall climbing in the world. They are among the largest vertical faces anywhere on Earth. The 6,286 meters high central summit was first climbed by American climbers Kim Schmitz, Galen Rowell, John Ross Kelly, Dennis Hennick, and James Morassi on July 21, 1977. They ascended a route that started on the west side and ended at the top of the south base. In the summer of 1984, four highly capable young Norwegian climbers, Hans Christian Dossit, Stein Fee Asheim, Dag Kulsrud, and Findele, climbed the north pillar of the Great Trango Tower. By far the most striking and longest vertical batteries of the massive, and an ascent that stand as a momentous blend of spirit, human will, and tragedy. They saw a photo of the impressive wall in a 1983 edition of Mountain Magazine. According to Cool's Root, like many other projects, the idea was conceived at home in the living room. The Norwegian team arrived in Pakistan and made their way to the base camp. They set up their base camp in a small, flat, sandy hollow between Moraine Ridge and the mountainside. They didn't know much about the failure beforehand. They only had three or four photos taken from the Baltoro Glacier and which only the upper part of the wall was visible. The massive lower section was only visible from the Dungey Glacier. They were amazed at the unbelievably elegant line, a beautiful initial buttress more than 900 meters high leading to a head wall of more than 600 meters. The wall pushed them to their limit. Due to bad weather and the weight of their gear, they took a long time to overcome the lower part of the wall. They spent three weeks climbing the initial two-thirds of the face. Some pitches involved climbing a precarious rug that barely supported their body weight. But they knew that the greatest challenge would be the 500 meters still to come. The slow climb means that their food supplies were running low and there was still a long way to climb. Collectively, they decided that a sign and coal's route would only do 90% of the route and then descend. Dorset and Dele would continue to the summit. But at first, no one wanted to leave. For a couple of days, they discussed the issue. While they debated, they advanced further up the route. 
Finally, they came to a point where the crag they were climbing often to an afraid of such difficulty that because of a lack of protection and general exhaustion, it was impossible to pre-climb. They knew that this was the moment to make a decision. Dele and Dosit would continue to the summit, Cole's route and Asaim would head down. Cole's route and Asaim made it safely back down. After a week, they watched with telelenses as Dele and Dosit tapped out on the upper head wall and climbed the mixed terrain to the Virgin East Summit. A triumph. Asaim and Cole's route then watched as their two friends started their descent. Surely thrill, but as just as surely in great fatigue. They began to refill the head wall before vanishing from view behind a ridge about halfway down the descent. Cole's route and Asaim thought that everything was under control, and both lip pace came. Asaim returned to Islamabad and Cole's route traveled to a nearby village to run some errands. When Cole's route returned to base came, there was no sign of Dele and Dosit. Scurrying the wall with binoculars turned up nothing. Days passed and there was no sign of the two Norwegians. Cole's route was certain that they had suffered an accident. It was not clear what happened to Dosit in Delhi. Perhaps an avalanche had ripped them up the wall. Or they may have come loose from an anchor, resulting in a fall of more than 1,500 meters. Since their tragic descent, this route has been called the route of no return. Three weeks later, a Pakistan Army helicopter arrived and located two lifeless bodies lying in the snow at the foot of the wall. They could not fake up their bodies because of bad weather. By the time they returned in better conditions, there was no trace of the two deceased Norwegians. They were buried by an avalanche. The triumph had turned into a total tragedy. Their ascent up the great Trangus northeast space was a groundbreaking Himalayan climb completed at high altitude. Though tragic, the route was, at the time, one of the most impressive long and technical climbs ever achieved at altitude. Since the first ascent, the Norwegian batteries has seen a limited number of successes. In 1990, a Japanese team and in 1991, a Spanish team climbed to the rim of the Norwegian batteries but did not reach the East Summit. In 1992, John Middendorp and Shavir Bangert made the second successful complete ascent of the East Summit via a route called the Grand Voyage, which at its middle briefly shares terrain with the Norwegian route on a long north pacing crack system. The Swiss-American duo climbed the Grand Voyage over 16 days and spent three days on the descent. Finally, in 2008, a poor man team from Norway made a rare complete ascent of the Norwegian batteries on the Great Triangle Tower a route that had gone unclimbed since its first ascent in 1984. Stein Ivor Grebdahl, Beat Tebu, Sigurd Feld, and Ralbe climbed the northeast paced and topped out on the east summit during May and June. The party spent 27 days on the ascent and took three days to descend. The tragic Norwegian effort proved to be a milestone of style and commitment in big wall climbing that paved the way for future landmarks. Thank you all so much for watching this video.
and if you enjoy it please leave a like and comment if you want to see more content like this in the future please consider subscribing to the channel as there is much more yet to come